start with the risk of being uh, a bit unfriendly. Um, so given the property of uh, time translation and invariance, if you want to be here at nine, and you look at your watch and it's nine and you are above, <laughs> you are not going to be here at nine. So my suggestion for tomorrow is when it's five to nine, you realize that you have to come down and you come down, OK? So just, uh, just before we agree, if you want, we can start at 9.05, but uh, I don't think it changes, OK? Thanks a lot. OK, so let's start. OK, so yesterday I talked about this kind of a zip law. So this power law in the abundances, and then log normal type distribution for across cells. And I, I, maybe I just mention a little bit on this, and then I go to the next, uh, so today's, yeah, talk. So here is just a simple origin of a long, so log log normal type distribution. So this distribution of some abundances, this shows this kind of long tail. And then log x, this is close to Gaussian. So there is another simple explanation for this, and uh, that is related to some uh, experiment. So basically, so this is an experiment, and you don't need to go into the details. So maybe only this part. So, or maybe even this part is not, not necessary. Only this is used for regulation. So what in this experiment doing is this? This is gene, and this is expressed. So messenger RNA produced, and then from that protein is produced, as you have heard from Central Dogma yesterday. And so, so in this experiment, the other part is some kind of regulation to, to suppress or something this. Uh, so by that, so this expression rate, K, is somehow experimentally changed, controlled. So basically, in this case, this is expressed, and this is uh, so maybe degraded. So simply, this concentration of this protein X is produced, and then just decreased. But furthermore. This cell grows. So this cell, so, so with this growth, so every component is diluted. So this. So this is without any stochasticity. So then, if you have some noise in this process, maybe this expression level is changed. So maybe eta t, eta g t, or something. And then, OK. Then maybe you have heard uh, from this uh, Fokker-Planck equation in the first two <laughs> lectures or something. And then you can see that this shows Gaussian distribution. So x shows this if you have some usual large band noise, and from the Foucault-Planck solution, you can see this kind of Gaussian distribution. But actually, this is different from this. And one thing that is missing is that mu, this growth rate, itself is fluctuating. So if you consider mu eta v, or something like that, then the issue here is that you have a term so so this is uh, different from usual yeah linear Langevin equation, and you have what they call multiplicative noise, 
and by that, so this shows this kind of long-tailed distribution. So maybe you have heard, okay, so you, you learned, I, I believe you learned <laughs> the focal plank equation in, from Holhez lecture. And then, so according to this Langevin equation, you can get this kind of focal plank equation. And by solving this focal plank equation, so we get this kind of, yeah, this type of distribution. So may maybe this is a, yeah, I, I, I don't think I have time to go into details of this, but so maybe as a kind of exercise, you can check that, this kind of what distribution it has. Okay, so this kind of distribution and then, okay. <coughs> Maybe I skip this, yeah. Yeah, so, and uh, actually, with this kind of uh, solution, so we get this kind of uh, distribution here. And the different color corresponds to the change of K. So with this experimental technique, by controlling this, some other external parameter, you can change K. So by increasing K, then you can have a different distribution, and then, so this is uh, measured, this x, and as I said previously, so there is a technique, flow, flow cytometer or flow cytometer or another cell sorter. Flow, flow cytometer is a technique that cell is, so flowing here and this later and check fluorescence or cell size. Cell sorter is a kind of a little bit advanced. By according to this, they choose one cell here, or another cell here. So they choose, for example, large cell or, or a fluorescent cell. Or, so they, they can select that. So the, the biologists use these kind of techniques. So, but anyway, so you can measure this distribution and that is what they obtained here, so this kind of distribution. And then, so what they say, GFP versus forward scattering. Forward scattering means in this, they measure by that. So forward scattering. They can measure the volume. So basically, fluorescent versus volume is the concentration of the protein. So, so by that they can measure of this X of each cell by cells. So, and they can do this very fast. So uh, in, in an hour or something, they can get uh, maybe 10,000 cells distribution or something like that. And by that, they, so they obtain this distribution. And then taking log, you can have this kind of distribution. So after taking log, it's uh, roughly, yes, symmetric, right and left. So it's, it's closer to log normal distribution. So, and actually, so we can check this that, uh, okay, using this kind of Langevin equation, and the solution agrees rather well here. So in this case, so there is a question that this noise and this noise, which is larger? And if this noise is much larger, basically you can neglect this, then usual Gaussian distribution. But if this noise is larger, then this kind of multiplicative type thing, and then it shows a kind of long tail distribution, and so, at least in this experiment, it's shown that uh, this, this noise in the growth rate is more dominant than this, so stochastic expression level noise of 2K. So, so that's, a, that's a kind of additional yeah, comment for yeah, yesterday's stuff. So, so I go to the next topic. So if you have, I, I, you have some questions or not, then.
then maybe I go to the okay today's okay so so I think I already started about uh, talking about this cell reproduction process and so I talk a little bit on this kind of reproduction of cells. So how, so in a cell, there are many components here. And then cell growth and divides. And so how this kind of a reproduction process is achieved. And actually, such kind of problem has been experimentally so being done or being done to make a kind of artificial cell in laboratory. So they put something into this uh, kind of uh, within this membrane and put these things and try to make a kind of artificially growing and dividing cells. And there are so some advances already. And, and of course that is related to the question of this origin of life. So that, that's a, that's a long term unsolved question in science. And so how just the initially chemical reaction process is going on and from how this just an ensemble of chemical reaction and this cell, reproducing cell, there is difference and how, how this has uh, happened. So that's a very basic unsolved question in science. So, and actually there are many, so experimental and theoretical discussions for this. So I just mentioned a little bit on this and then some more, a little bit more thermodynamic uh, property of a cell and so minimal cell. And then going to talk a little bit on some kind of consistency of reproduction and molecular replication, how it's broken and then cell may go to sleeping state. And actually that is also universal in many bacteria or another, another, other microorganisms uh, go to a sleeping state in a bad condition. So, so I hope I talk this today. So, okay. So, Actually, the basic question in, so, so I, I do not go into details of this uh, origin of life type problem, but uh, maybe j just I mentioned, and maybe I hope you, you can learn by yourself, is that, okay, yesterday I think you have heard about central dogma. And then the important point in this biological system now has, okay, there is some kind of metabolic process and uh, enzyme and make some energy and then keep the cell state for growth. And so that is kind of, okay, metabolism. And for metabolism to get energy to work, then you need enzyme enzyme, catalytic activity. So that is basis for living. But as you know, there is another important issue is that genetic information. So currently, current cells so we have DNA, and from that, so information is transferred to this next offspring. So this genetic information is necessary to produce this enzyme. So as you have heard in central dogma. But for this genetic information, replication process of DNA for in the they need enzyme. So
So it's a kind of mutual process. And so then the considering the origin of life, so which is first, that is a kind of, yeah, may, maybe chicken egg type problem. So chicken or egg, which is, and so, so there are many, many discussions on this. So how this process started, so this, but currently these two are kind of rather separated. So these are protein and these are DNA. So one possibility is that originally, original cell system or original proto cell or proto life system may have something both a little bit. So, and then both, so initially they have both and somehow they separate. So that's a kind of a hypothesis of RNA world. And so some primitive RNA have both nature a little bit. And then, so one guy is, one type of molecules is so specialized for this and one another type of molecules specialized this. So that, that's uh, one hypothesis. Yeah. So just to clarify, the hypothesis of uh, RNA world is that uh, everything was, I mean, both uh, the sort of metabolic part uh, or the energy harvesting yeah, and the so, information. So RNA world hypothesis, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a <laughs> strong supporter for that. And so at least they have found that some ends catalytic activity, so some RNA can have so this genetic information and also a little bit catalytic activity. Some, some RNA uh, have that, so the lipo enzyme have that. And so that discovery so accelerates the view of this RNA world. But how this occurs, nobody knows. So, so maybe this may occur as a symmetry breaking and actually, I don't have time to discuss this, but a uh, few years ago, Takeuchi and myself uh, proposed that uh, maybe some kind of symmetry breaking process leads to this kind of separation. So, so but that, that's also kind of hypothesis. So in a theoretical world, it works, but <laughs> I don't know if it really yeah, happened. Yeah. And another possibility is that, okay, this is, uh, initially this world exists. Initially, this world exists, but then they don't have genetic information, so this uh, kind of a, so reliable, faithful replication cannot happen, but at least some kind of metabolic process is working on and functionally exists. And later, genetic takeover. Yes. So I think uh, one, one issue is um, all of this should should happen in a confined environment. So yes. and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I hope to. Right? <laughs> so uh, and membranes are yeah. mostly yeah. composed of uh, yeah. lipids, right? Yeah, I, I was thinking of writing the next one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually these three are essential. So somehow they membrane and enzyme is encapsulated and then some kind of a genetic information. So, oh, okay, this and this, how, how these, uh, so join. It's also a kind of question, yeah. And genetic takeover theory is that, or theory. So essentially, so 
yeah. in this RNA world, there should be also a story of how you, uh, I mean, how do you do the membrane? Do you do the membrane with RNAs? Or, uh, so far, no. Or no, do you need a no, little bit of metabolism? No, no. Yeah. There, so there are some uh, arguments that initially there is maybe membrane does not exist, and then you have some kind of a small porous media. So like in some kind of a, yeah, a, 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 in a rock, there are small porous. And then these uh, kind of, these works as a kind of a small porous hole can work as a kind of a, <laughs> external membrane. And then somehow they find some kind of a, so external, so external kind of hole, porous media. Porous media. Yeah. And then somehow membrane is invented or <laughs> take over or something like that. But th that's all the kind of uh, hypothesis, yeah. Is that the hydrothermal? Yeah, hydrothermal. It's in the and ocean, so, right? Yeah, yeah, so in this uh, hydrothermal, in this, uh, yeah, Arthas uh, or sea, yeah, bottom of the sea, there is some kind of a volcano and uh, around that hydrothermal, and then there may be some reaction going on and some are here, and then they may have this kind of process. So that's... Maybe <laughs> plausible, but uh, so far there is no, no proof. And, and as for the relationship between this and this, so for instance, maybe you, you, you are all more, mostly physics students, so you know Freeman Tyson. So this Rina of physicist, and he has a theory that initially this, and then probably somewhere this uh, kind of genetic takeover occurred. And I, I, I recommend his book of this. Uh, it's a very, yeah, just hundred page small book. And, uh, but it's, it's a very good book. And uh, I, I recommend you, you can read this in, in just a few hours. But uh, anyway, it's a very good book. And so he proposed, he, he insisted that initially this kind of world exists. And he has uh, some kind of uh, Ising model type, <laughs> yes, simple model. So very spin model, active or inactive molecule, and uh, so this is represented by Ising spin, Ising spin, and then he modeled this, and he discussed probably somewhere this occurred, but there is no theory for this. So 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 there are lots of yeah mysteries here. Okay, so. So I cannot solve this yet. Yeah. So if you are interested in yeah, you can try to think about this. Okay, so this, this, yeah, actually, so initially this is this Freeman Dyson picture. And maybe this kind of, a, yeah, replication, this kind of genetic information by RNA first is that uh, maybe one famous person for this is Manfred Eigen. And so Manfred Eigen, so who is a, also who, who is a Nobel Prize winner chemist. And he discusses this possibility, and but he pointed out uh, several problems for this and what is called error catastrophe, that sometimes it's uh, due to this error this information is not so well sustained. So there is a serious problem here. And he discussed this problem. And he tried to answer so how to solve this. And he proposed that several, high, so what he called hypercycles. So some, some reaction 
molecule supports the other, and some of the uh, supports the other, mutually supporting molecule, so catalytic molecule reaction set, can solve the question. But then he also pro found the problem there. So, and from that, he finally showed that this is necessary. <laughs> so, so these are somehow linked with each other. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so that's an interesting question. And also there is a, okay. So basically, so now you want to make a, this kind of problem in the experiment. Then if you want to do that, probably one needs to put some kind of, a, okay, you want to make a kind of a minimal protocell that maybe you need to make a membrane and put some kind of a enzyme and then some kind of genetic information material, maybe DNA or RNA, maybe RNA or DNA. And from that, this enzyme is created. And then probably from this enzyme or some other protein, maybe membrane is created. And then also this enzyme should be produced. And then by that, this is replicated. So if you make such kind of experimental system, then maybe you can say that, uh, so I, I created life or something like that. And people are trying to do that. And uh, actually my colleague started this kind of uh, 25 years ago or 30 years ago. And so, so I, I supported this group and uh, so they are kind of little bit progress. And uh, so, okay, so for that, maybe some nutrient is necessary. So, so but this is externally su supplies. So that's a kind of minimal cell construction. And people are trying to make this kind of minimal enzymatic reaction metabolism and and actually, some Japanese produced a kind of, yeah, simple, not, not simple. <laughs> it's a, it's a, some kind of model of this, uh, mo no, no, not an experimental system of this uh, with 144 species of viable molecules. And they put this into in vitro. and these reactions of these 144 chemical species and this RNA and some other molecules. And, uh, and then, yeah, they succeeded in that this can continue to this process and some producing genetic information, but not membrane itself, yeah. So, so still this is not, not simple at all. And actually they are not producing from this uh, scratch. They all, these molecules are extracted from the bacteria and they, they minimize this, try to minimize this uh, reaction and found this kind of uh, system, what they call pure system. And, but, but this still for, for physicists, too, too complex, yeah. So, it, so actually, but they, they know all the chemical ingredients here. So, so actually, yeah, Matsura and others made a kind of simulation of these uh, 104 species and the 5,000 reactions. And, uh, and they, they, they can produce <laughs> that this can going on. But still, in the experiment, Usually, this cannot sustain so long, and some some kind of a waste chemical, and so finally 
in and after some hours, this process stops. So, so still, uh, it's far from. So there is a problem of waste. Yeah. And as for this genetic reformation plus uh, membrane, so even though they cannot uh, make a membrane by themselves, so they put this kind of uh, so so oil emulsion. and RNA, and enzyme. And so they make this kind of system and try to evolve this system. So, so this has been successful, and you can see some paper by Ichihashi. Group. Fortunately, maybe Yomo did this, and Ichihashi. Group. Yeah. So, so if you are interested in, maybe you can check some of these. So, but <laughs> I, I do not go into details. These are very experimental. But this is also theoretically interesting. This uh, the problem of parasites or some others and how this evolution occurs. So they they found this interesting process. So, so maybe you can check this. Okay. So there are so many experiments, but it's uh, okay. So now, okay, we, we come back to theoretical discussion. So we try to understand kind of minimal situation of this. And so at least you need some kind of a, so for the moment we do not discuss so much about it. So then, what we need is that, okay. Nutrient from enzyme created, and this enzyme is created, and uh, membrane is created. So, so for the moment, I forget about this information. So now this process is usually believed to be a non-equilibrium. And if you have read the Schrodinger's book of this origin of life, of what, what is life, and then at the latter part, he showed that no equilibrium condition is necessary for life. So how many have, of you have read Schrodinger's book of what is life? Okay, wow. Okay. Yeah, there are four or five. Yeah, that, that's a very old book. But uh, of course, this, uh, this uh, famous Schrodinger. What is life? So in, in the first part of the book, he, he kind of uh, predicted what is uh, genetic information, what type of molecule carries on the genetic information. And then after his pre prediction, maybe 10, 10 years of something like that, so Watson, Crick, and Rosalind Frank so showed that uh, in this DNA structure. So, and in the latter part, they, he discussed that no equilibrium condition is important. To, so how, how life so does not increase entropy. So he, he proposed that the life system is negative entropy. So that, that's the latter part of his book. So anyway, so somehow no equilibrium condition. 
here I pointed out but the importance of enzyme. And uh, actually, enzyme is encapsulated within. And so outside, enzyme does not exist. So enzyme is within this membrane. So, so that structure is quite important. So here I want to discuss encapsulated enzyme. So importance of compartment and the catalysis. And so in this system, so maybe by this membrane is produced and grow, and maybe is later it may divide. So this is outside is, uh, so how no equilibrium it is is a kind of tricky point because when you discuss, uh, for example, Carnot cycle or Carnot engine, you need two, two paths. And by that, to so give some energy to this, and they, they can make some kind of a, yeah, heat engine. But here, usually, outside is, of this cell, outside is, I'm not sure, outside is knowing, not necessarily knowing people. But just you have some kind of nutrient here and some, some chemical, chemical molecule here. So basically, of course, this flow occurs. So that part is somehow probably no equilibrium. And then this grows and divides. So basically this system, so I point out this enzyme is quite important. The reason for this, so maybe by this, so enzyme is catalyst molecule. So you learn that catalytic molecule, catalysis does not change equilibrium condition only change the speed. So you, you learn in chemistry or thermodynamics. So consider that some kind of a process that uh, dissolves, dissolves, and catalyst. Some make a product. Plus this and then this reaction is bidirectional. And they say that, okay, equilibrium condition between resource and product. So equilibrium condition given by resource and production. Production plus resource. So this equilibrium condition does not change by the existence of catalyst. Still, in a biological catalytic molecule or enzyme, this speed change by the existence of the catalyst is enormous, so quite rare. So, maybe tend to be 10 times faster. So that means if you have enzyme here, catalyst here, this reaction can occur, resource and product. But if this C catalyst does not exist, this reaction basically does not occur in uh, our, our time scale. Maybe if you wait forever, maybe finally it goes to equilibrium to, to go to this state. But otherwise, without this existence, basically this reaction does not exist. If the reaction does not exist in the outside, that means you can have this uh, 
ratio can be anything because R and P are kind of totally this disjoint. So cannot change by the reaction. So it can be arbitrary. But within the cell, you have catalyst. And once this comes in, for, for example, product uh, resources coming in, then this reaction occurs. And then probably this catalyst works so well, then it's equilibrated. So this is a little bit strange situation. External world is no equilibrium anyway. Anyway, so it can take any one. But once it comes in within this membrane, there is, it goes to equilibrium. So, so in some sense, cell is a kind of a system to make the system to go to equilibrium. So, so that, that's a little bit uh, counterintuitively or different from usually discussed. But, but as far as I know, this catalyst works so well. So that means this time scale is so different. So, so this could happen. So I, I think this is important. So, so basically, in that sense, cell is a kind of equilibration apparatus to unveil external non-equilibrium condition. So externally, this maybe product does not exist at all or something like that. Then once it gets here, it's going to equilibrate. But of course, it's not completely equilibrated because they need enzyme and growth and they, they need membrane or something. So not perfect equilibration. But so, so this point is quite important, I think. And actually, probably one of the important points of the life system or invention of life system is this catalyst. And so they can change the time scale of the reaction enormously. So by that, so they have their own time scale. So that, that is, uh, I also come back to this point uh, later for a different uh, biological topic. But with this change, you can change the time scale. Okay, so that's kind of a, yeah, basic argument. So, so by that, I just talk about this uh, kind of thermodynamic efficiency of this system. And so I take a very simple model. So, so compartment catalyst only within, so, Okay, this is what I said. Most reactions are facilitated by catalysts, and so it is factor sometimes like that. And so now, okay, here I, I sometimes resource I, and I sometimes write nutrients. So sorry, this is now nutrient. Yeah. So the simplest model for this is that nutrient comes in, and then this enzyme is produced from this nutrient. And, but this production is used by enzyme. So this is a kind of the nature of what they call autocatalytic. So they catalyze the process of this to produce itself. And also they make a, some kind of a membrane type molecule. So, so kind of what I call here membrane precursor. So, this enzyme and nutrient, or maybe nutrient one produces enzyme. So nutrient one, so you, you have nutrient one that produces enzyme and the nutrient two, uh, this enzyme produces membrane precursor and membrane precursor is attached to this, so this membrane molecule is attached to here, and then grow. So, so very, very, so 
in some sense, much simpler model than the one I talked to yesterday. So ju just, uh, just thin membrane molecule, membrane precursor molecule, and the enzyme, and nutrient. Yeah. The fact that uh, nutrient comes in and does not go out, it's also non-equilibrium. Oh, yeah, because yeah. Because otherwise you would have uh, zero flux, right? Yeah, so, yes, yeah. That is necessary, yeah, yeah. So it's coming in, it's a membrane, so somehow makes this kind of capsulated, yes, enzyme. So if enzyme goes out freely and then this concentration outside and inside is the same, then it does not work. And it's yeah. essentially because you have the enzyme that consumes the nutrient, uh, yes. that the yeah. concentration inside uh, yeah. is less yeah. than the one outside, so that yeah. you get good. Uh, yeah. So, so, so this is uh, so simple model, so maybe I can, okay. Here I can use, so new, new, I, I have, sometimes use nutrients and I sometimes use resource and <laughs> yeah. So N and R are basically same. <laughs> okay, so, so consider this model and then discuss this model then basically you have res nutrient or resource chemical and then enzyme and membrane and here we assume that X as the enzyme concentration here and membrane precursor concentration is Y here. And then you have resource. So with this reaction process of so going in here, so you can have enzyme is produced from resource. So this kind of resource and enzyme and catalyzed by this, that means change of X is proportional sum coefficient and catalyzed by this, so it's proportional to X. And then this reaction going on, okay, this, with this K and this is, we take this is one, so it comes back. So this is kind of this reaction process. So it's a, so this reaction is catalyzed by this enzyme and going forward and backward is this. And maybe forward rate is K and backward rate is one, yeah. And then Y membrane precursor is produced, uh, catalyzed by enzyme. So it's again proportional to X and then, okay, maybe you need some other proportional coefficient. Kappa X, kappa Y. And then again, so basically you have resource. So in this case, so nutrient to membrane and with this L to one and catalyzed by enzyme. So So that's, and again, this, okay, from this first, membrane precursor is put to this membrane, so with some rate. So maybe, and that is attached here, so within this, membrane precursor molecule exists, but it's attached here, so this goes like this. Okay, that's this model, but also with this growth, so membrane is produced and then cell volume grows. So again, with this growth, so if you take 
this, so it's diluted. So this is a, a simple equation, and you can solve the steady state easily. So, so n nothing very <laughs> special, yeah, interesting solution exists for here. So we can set up this. Okay. Yes. So we are talking about life. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so no, um, just uh, so here, lambda a growth rate uh, is a parameter, right? Uh, is not endogenous, uh, oh. determined by the okay. properties of uh, reactions. And uh, so you could say lambda equal to zero or even lambda negative, right? Okay, but lambda, okay, where is that? Okay, lambda should be, okay, lambda. So this is the ratio that membranes produced. And by this production, so addition of membrane, volume increases. So basically, lambda is uh, proportional to this membrane production. So this is membrane production. So, so basically this. So, and maybe then maybe with the structure or something, maybe you, this, there is some other, yeah, proportion coefficient. And this, this we assume it's a constant. Mm -hmm. Why? So this is the ratio that membrane is produced. Yeah, from that, so membrane molecule decreased by this and then accordingly it's produced, but, but maybe so there is some kind of transformation ratio or something. So that corresponds to maybe this is less than one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is a kind of very. Uh, uh, if I understand correctly, the point is that these are equations for the concentration. You could write uh, equivalent equations for the total number of molecules. And then it will become a, you, you will not have that term minus lambda x and minus lambda y. But you could immediately interpret the growth rate as the change of the membrane. Yeah, so basically, so I, I, so maybe I do not discuss about the structure of membrane so much or if it's fair or, <laughs> yeah. So, so, but basically, I, simply I assume that uh, this membrane increases and then the volume increases accordingly, yeah. And the, yeah, proportion ratio, yeah. So, so this is kind of set of equation and then we can, so this is a simple equation, so we can have a easily go to steady state solution, and then we can discuss the nature of this. And then, of course, with this nutrient, so cell can grow because en enzyme is created, and with some ratio. And then what we want to discuss here is that, okay, kind of thermodynamic efficiency. So maybe in the, I guess in the first uh, Jorge's lectures, maybe you have known that uh, some kind of uh, importance of entropy production. Entropy production. That is loss, so thermodynamic loss. And this is basically done by this kind of flow versus, if there is some kind of reaction, so there is a, some kind of chemical flow for each reaction and chemical affinity. Mm. 
then, so, so actually this chemical affinity is that basically equilibrium condition to forward and backward ratio. From that you can compute. And then it's going to this entropy production is something like this. Okay, this affinity and this is flow rate. And this is another reaction. So for this reaction and for this reaction. And okay, did I forget something? Can I ask another question, sorry? So in this equation, you, you also need to have an equation for R, right? Because R is not the concentration outside. R is a, yeah, given, yeah. It, yeah, I assume that this is a supplied constantly, so it's a kind of a constant external. Okay, so external but, parameter. Okay. Yeah. So nu nutrient, so maybe, if there is, yeah, constant supply. So if there is a external concentration and according to external concentration, it comes in. Yeah. So then, so, okay, we check this kind of, a, yeah, entropy production. So this is a entropy production. And then for per growth, how much entropy is produced? So we can discuss this uh, entropy production per volume increase as a sigma over lambda. So this is uh, entropy production per volume increase. So the point here is that if this is small, maybe the loss is small. And usually we, we so we learn from Carnot cycle that uh, when we put the system nearly near to equilibrium and make very slowly to change, then the efficiency is highest. The loss is minimal. And so the question is that if this is true or not. So here, so okay, R is basically externally supplied. So if this external resource supply is quite low and slowly it's coming in, so it's somewhat kind of a very slow, slow process. So what maybe we learn from quasi-static uh, uh, condition or something like that. And then the question is that as a function of external flow of resource, so usually maybe Carnot cycle type thing suggests that, okay, equilibrium, in the case of equilibrium, Carnot cycle is something like that. So external resource flow is nearly zero. This is almost zero. And it's coming in and maybe if you try to make this faster, then the loss is larger. And in this system, from this calculation of this steady state and this value, we get this behavior. So in some sense, for this cell, if it's very slowly increasing and just taking resources slowly and very slowly, thermodynamically, it's not so efficient. For this cell, it's better to move in a kind of fast speed. And, but if you increase much faster, maybe the loss in increases. And the reason for this is the nature of this enzyme. So if, this, if you have more resources, you have enzyme is produced. 
And if you have enough enzyme, the system approaches equilibrium. So if the system is near to approach, goes to approach equilibrium, the loss is smaller. So in that sense, so if nutrient is resource is small, the enzyme is not sufficiently created. So it's still far from equilibrium. But by making enzyme more, so it approaches equilibrium. So, so that's why this kind of thing occurs. The loss is decreasing. But, but actually, it, it cannot go to zero because this cell can produce other mem membrane processes and then this part has also yeah, entropy production. So the loss by producing membrane growth, so this increases by membrane uh, growth and so volume growth. So by that, this increases occur. But this is approach to equilibrium by enzyme. So, so this is somewhat interesting. And uh, so there is some kind of yeah, basic loss if you have this cell is put in a kind of minimal condition. So that's one, one interesting aspect of this cell when you consider this, uh, yeah. So, uh, okay, so how much uh, can one apply this uh, uh, understanding to real cells in the sense that, uh, so, I mean, say, unless uh, you are discussing protocell or, say, yeah. origin of life, but essentially, uh, in real cells, you have mitochondria, you have, uh, say, energy, say, ATP molecules and things like this, which are driving, essentially, yeah. systems out of equilibrium inside the cell, right? Yeah. So I, I do not know exact data. I'm sorry for this. And... But, but it looks like if this, uh, the cell, it's somehow more efficient if the cell is uh, not, so usually when the cell does not grow, it's, it's not so, so they lose a lot of, uh, yeah, entropy, increase the entropy and production. So they have some kind of what they call maintenance energy. And so they, they need some kind of maintenance. And then this may decrease first for, by growing that. So staying just there is uh, not, not so efficient for this cell. And that seems to be OK. But exact value for this, I'm not sure. Yeah. OK. So. Okay, so this is kind of a simple example of this kind of a simple cell argument of this uh, law. And then, okay, there are many other important laws in a cell. And, but actually, I think, uh, so the other speakers uh, will talk about this Mono's law and this uh, Schechter, Scott Mo, uh, who are law. So I, I, I'll skip that. So the, this is a kind of general law, the, how the growth rate depends on these uh, external resources. And of course, it's interesting how this kind of simple argument is related to more biological established law. So that's, that's also a kind of, yeah, quest, question to be resolved. Okay, but, but okay, for these kind of laws, please, maybe they, they will talk today or tomorrow, I think. Yeah, the, the other lecture. So I skip this kind of uh, famous, yeah, mono, mono law, this substrate and growth rate and other RNA amount and versus growth rate or something such kind of law. 
So they, they will talk, I believe. OK. I just, maybe 20 minutes, I think I mentioned a little bit about so the transition to sleeping state. And one general issue in this kind of primitive cell is that always there is some kind of waste chemicals. So here, so I produce this kind of always enzyme and always membrane. So no other components are produced with this reaction. So that's, that is, in some sense, efficient. But actually, in the chemical reaction process in a cell, producing enzyme, this itself is a kind of long polymers. Proteins are long polymers. So you have kind of long polymers, and then So protein is a, so in a certain sequence of amino acids, acid sequence, they are kind of good protein. And so with this, uh, uh, some sequence, uh, maybe for, for physicists, it's better to use uh, I think model type representation, so maybe this kind of sequence, this is good. Good means that uh, catalytic activity, so. But this reaction process to produce this polymer, sometimes there is error, and that is unavoidable due to thermodynamics. So, and so there is some temperature, so it's not completely, so always completely same molecules are produced. It's, uh, sometimes this goes to this or something like that. So some, some, some yeah, sequence like this. Then, you, some, so usually, this catalytic activity is lost. And that is a kind of waste chemical. And actually, this kind of waste type chemical is not good by itself, but it's also, it can attach to a good molecule or something like that and then suppress this process. So, so in this, uh, usually in this experiment of a cell, there are some molecules, some proteins molecules aggregate, and then so attach to some other and aggregate. And then, so this uh, can suppress this. And that's always, unavoidable. And of course, in the present cell, there are some techniques, so cells invented to have some kind of other enzyme to so kind of make a kind of disposer. And so to eliminate this. Sorry, but even in absence of disposal, just because you grow, you dilute the... Yeah. Okay. Growth is important in that. Okay. Yeah. So if it's gross, of course, waste chemical concentration is diluted. But if it does not grow, in some sense, it's uh, yeah, difficult. This may be aggregated, and that, that may happen. So, yeah, you, you <laughs> already, yeah. Winston Churchill says that uh, growth has, I forget the name, Growth, 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 so there, there is somewhere, growth. Okay, growth hides every problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. So actually, if you have waste, 
And maybe if the city just grows, 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 then this wasted yeah, proportion is decreased. So, so of course, growth is important. Growth can solve this waste yeah, accumulation. So, but that means if the growth does not work, this may be a serious problem. And actually, in the experiment of protocell, usually they sometimes go to this problem because sometimes growth, cell growth cannot work so well, and then this waste chemicals more accumulated, aggregated, and that further suppresses the growth, and it goes to a bad state, and finally it yeah, collapses. So that, that often happens in the protocell experiment. And probably that still exists, may exist in the present cell, even though they have this poser chemicals or something, it may still happen. So that's, that's the discussion of this sleeping state. Okay, usually when you have, so cells and they put this cell, so bacteria, so this is a kind of present bacteria experiment, and put this bacteria into uh, some nutrient condition. And then the number of cell, so after some lag time, they start to increase. And here they basically increase it exponentially, so this is log scale. And then at some stage, they stop the growth and they no longer grow. Basically, this is because uh, nutrient per cells is not enough, and they stop. And then they are going to non, not grow, not die. So they are staying some kind of sleeping state. So cells are there, still not dying. So, and then after, long time they may start to die. So there is some different phase, exponential growth phase and sleeping state, dormant state or such kind of name uses, dormant state. So basically sleeping state. So there is a transition from here to here. And that is quite general. And that is theoretically interesting because usually in the yesterday's talk or in this simple model, usually this kind of autocatalytic growth, so X produces X, so some kind of process is going on in that, in that cell. So that means the abundance of so chemical growth. So basically the process is, so, and, and, so the number of molecules there increases with this sum, and this is positive, then it grows exponentially. So that's ex ex exponential phase. So this number increases exponentially. That's easy to understand. Then the sleeping state means A equals zero. Why? If A is negative, okay, in a bad condition, cell cannot grow and starts to die, and finally it disappears. So this is death. So you have some condition, external condition or something. Usually we can think that this growth rate is maybe in a bad condition, die. That is easy to understand. So here this grow, here die. But sorry, uh, just to understand this A equal to zero state. So is it that uh, cell do not reproduce or that they reproduce but the reproduction rate is compensated by the death rate? In this case, so, so there are some <laughs> subtle cases, but uh, at least in some cases, cells 
each cell does not grow. So some, some grow and some dies and it's not balanced. That, that is not necessarily exist, at least in the dormant state, what they call dormant state or sleeping state. So they, they do, just do not grow. So every cell is something like in some condition, A is nearly zero. And then, so let's use a simple model. It shows this, okay, this goes here and this negative to positive and this position is just a single in the usual simple model. And then how this is possible? So that's a question. And so the proposal here is that, okay, this may be related to the problem of waste. So here maybe waste chemicals is accumulated and then suppresses the growth and somehow this waste chemical and this uh, production is uh, somehow compensated within a cell. And so that this state exists. So, so that's a simple idea here. Okay, then. Uh, sorry, we, ju just to be sure. So the idea is that in some sense, waste uh, is a regulator of growth. Yeah, waste okay. is, yeah. That's the suppresses okay. and aggregate some some aggregate molecule. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, we did this model about uh, some time ago. Yeah, this this one. Okay. So. So this is a. So, now now we use. Uh, resource as S, so, so, sorry, sometimes N, sometimes R, and some, this is S, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> depending on the collaborator, we use a different <laughs> notation. <laughs> yeah, basically, so external res substrate or resource, and then it goes to some kind of important enzyme and actually enzyme, okay, here, active protein, autocatalytic active protein, so we call A, and, but there appears some kind of waste or inhibitor. So this is waste, B, or, but I would just like to say that, okay, this may be inhibitor or something, inhibitor of growth, so, but I, I like to use just waste, yeah. So basically S and resource and A and B. And so another issue here is that this waste chemical attached to this active molecule. So they make a, some kind of complex molecule. So another process here we put is A and B make a, some kind of complex. And but A is active protein, so that, that works as enzyme and catalysis. But when it's attached to by B, it cannot work. So, so maybe you can think of this uh, protein, how protein makes a catalytic activity. So they, they have some structure, protein, and then A protein. So some structure makes some, this structure makes some kind of catalyst. So in many protein, yeah, science book, you can show that this kind of some structure works as a kind of function for catalyst. And then, but if B is attached here, B is, then it cannot work. Okay, so this is a very simple kind of toy model. So, so resource and A and B, and it's produced from here with some ratio, and then A 
and B make some kind of complex. So basically the reaction process is that and S goes to B and catalyzed by this and A plus B makes complex. So, so then you can write this equation Okay, basically, so resource, okay, maybe A is produced from here, and with the ratio of this uh, function of A, and this is the ratio of a function. S, I think. So, then you can write down this increase of A is that, okay, produced here. And by that, A, okay, A plus B produces C. So that means A dot, with this, A decreases uh, minus plus C with some for, for if this is forward, this is okay, so, something like that. So this is a G A B G A B C Okay, so this is the process to make a kind of complex. And by making a complex, A decreases. So with this complex production, AB, and then the ratio of A decreases. And then, okay, if you consider this, so forward and backward reaction, then it's increases from C. So this is AB minus C, basically. Uh, so this is function. And okay, maybe then this protein may be decomposed with some rate, but these are not so important. Maybe you can forget about this. And again, this growth, cell growth, it's diluted. So <laughs> again, previously I used lambda, but here the growth rate is mu. So mu is, uh, mu is, Okay, so and then okay, C is this, and then okay, and resources. So external resources given from outside, and it's uh, okay. It's changed to transported to internal state by A, and then. Yeah, so resource is used to A or B, so this is decreased, and this is also, yeah, diluted by the volume. So you can think of this model. And I'm not sure. Uh, okay. One, another addition in this model is that, okay, so basically, from resource, A or B is produced. And here we assumed that FA is
So in a good resource condition, so always good molecules produced. But in a bad condition, so maybe more of this waste is produced. So, so there are some reasons to assume this. Usually, to produce a good molecules, they need some energy to, so if in the process of reproduction, replication of molecules, usually, as I said, there are, can be many errors. But in the present cell, they have some kind of mechanism to correct the erroneous molecule. That is called uh, kinetic proofreading. So basically, there is some kind of error correction. So if you make some kind of molecule sequence, often there are some kind of so miss so sites, and then this can be corrected. But this needs some kind of uh, energy or these resources. So so by that, so we can assume that in a good condition. Okay, always more, more, yeah, correct, correct molecule is produced, and in a bad condition, so this fraction is larger. Actually, this can be this. You may find this is kind of a ad hoc in this model, but we can think of other models that that does not have this, but still we can get this kind of result. OK. So, so maybe I, I think I finish in a few minutes. So I, I show the results. OK. Basically, the result of this kind of, uh, so according to this result, you can compute how this kind of, uh, so resources coming in. And according resources coming in, then the cell volume grows. And so you can compute this growth rate mu as a function of S according to this model. And then the result is something like this. External nutrient condition is decreased, then at some stage it goes down. So mu, mu is this. It goes down drastically. So maybe it's not exactly zero, but it's very close to zero. So and then, so OK, if you do not consider any decomposition, basically this state remains. But if you have decomposition, maybe at some point, maybe it goes to death state. So basically, you have kind of active and sleeping state and death state. OK, so I think I think maybe, OK. The here, so basically, this transition occurs. Here, basically, active molecule exists. So mostly, A is dominant, and very little B, and very little C. But here, so more, you have more B, and this fraction of A decreases. And, but it's still not zero. It exists in this reaction process. It remains here. So, so A active molecules is trapped by this. So, so this is the state. So active molecule is trapped by this B. So this is a sleeping state. And that is important, because in this kind of autocatalytic system, if A goes to 0, there is no way to recover. Because to produce active molecule, A is necessary. So if A goes to 0, the growth is not recovered. 
So usually in that model, so as I said previously, okay, this, this kind of a thing occurs. So maybe in this case, so. And then in a bad condition, if A goes to negative and it goes A goes to zero and it dies. But in this case, so A is hidden into C. A is into this C. C is A plus B. So even though it still slowly exists here, and then when you regain the nutrient, this comes out from C. And then it can start to grow. And actually, this is such behavior is generally observed in a bacteria. So bacteria, they put into this bad condition. They no longer grow and stay there. And then if you regain the nutrient, after some time, they recover the growth. Yeah. So, yeah. Like this B or uh, bad conditions like antibiotics, for example, right? B is, yeah, B is increased by antibiotics also. Yeah, yeah. So, or, or maybe in a, so the typical experiment is that just cut the nutrient. And so they starve. And they starve and sleep. And so that's how this kind of behavior appears. And then, okay, maybe I, I think I should stop here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I talk a little bit more. Yeah. Other questions? Not from Matteo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think we can go to the break and be back at yeah. 11.